Welcome to this week's episode of No Cover Music Magazine here at American Guitar Boutique, 707 13th Street, Phoenix City, Alabama. Been trying to get this guy on the show for a while, and I'm really happy to have you here, Mr. John Boy. Hey, Tim. So, uh, that's Thank cool. You. It's been a while, but it has been. We, we worked on it, we got you here. This yeah. is cool. Um, it means a lot that you asked me to come. Thank you. John's been, uh, he's one of these guys, he came in, I guess the loft was the first time I yeah. heard you play. We were hosting a jam there. And he came in and sat in with the band, and he's one of those guys that he seems all quiet and unassuming, and then comes in and gets on the stage, and you just go, wow, <laughs> who is that guy? And uh, that's with your electric guitar. Tonight we're going to hear some of your songwriting skills and yes, and uh, and your acoustic guitar playing, which if you when you see him play, you'll notice he's got a really beautiful sounding guitar that we'll probably get into talking about. But first we want to get into a little bit of music, so what's the first tune you want to do for us? Uh, we're gonna do um, which one did I do first? Oh yeah, uh, I'm right. You left, which was <laughs> my my attempt at, at writing a country song. Yeah, uh, with the the you know right and left side, but we'll see if it works. All right. <laughs> fingers and lips Noticing for the first time all of the cracks here in my steps Ain't got no bread in the bread box and ain't got an itch to scratch You rubbed me down with oil and then handed me a match I got a knack of seeing things before they come to pass. Cause I saw it like a big freight train just barreling down the tracks. You'd hop on and you'd be gone. You wouldn't be coming back. But nothing. I was right all along. You left me all alone. This place looks a whole lot different now that your stuff's all gone. I guess I never actually had much of anything at all. But I appreciate you leaving your keys, the glasses, these crackers, these cokes. I've been saying I was only badly bent, but for other I think I'm broke. I'm right, you left, nothing left but nothing. I was right all along You left me all alone so Tell me where I was wrong You said I was wrong but Just like I said One day you'd be gone I think I was right Cause I'll be sleeping alone tonight I'm right, you left Nothing left But nothing I was right all along all alone I'm right 
that you left Nothing left but nothing I was right all along I'm still right all along That's a clever tune. Yeah, thank you. I like it. I like it. Um, I'm always... Uh, I like songwriting, and I'm always enamored by different guys' approaches to songs, and and that's cool. That's a that's a great take on a tune. So, um, tell me a little bit about what makes you tick. What inspires you to play guitar? Um, my brothers initially inspired me to play guitar uh, when I picked it up in high school, and I had uh, I was surrounded by a great group of guys, um, and that Bebo Norman, who you know went on to be a, a really successful uh, Christian artist. He lived up the street for me, and and uh, or from me and I just wanted to be like him you know I, so I was kind of surrounded by good guitar players and, and got a chance to start doing that and then from there it just took off and I just you know guitar has brought me joy ever since I was a teenager and uh, I haven't necessarily gotten any better at it <laughs> but, yeah, I don't know but, that's but arguable found, but I found a lot more enjoyment in it and um, and then the songwriting part of it is just kind of something that's happened in the last 10 years or so. Yeah. Well, that kind of brings me to my next question, because I was going to ask you if there was music in your house growing up, if your mom and dad played, and you mentioned your brother, mm -hmm. so music in your house, did, you, did your folks play, and how did that come? You know, mama can play the, uh, the piano. She forced us through piano lessons uh, with Miss Lamb, which we all hated and, and got rid of as soon as possible, but... Now um, you look back on it and go, that I was I wish cool. I could play a keyboard, and I wish I could be a keyboard player, but, um, but yeah, I'm really glad about that, because even though my parents weren't really into music, uh, all three of uh, us boy boys are into music, and so something was going on there that inspired us, so... Yeah, that's really cool. Um, and, uh, and you play in a few different projects around town. I know you got something new uh, in the works. Want to yeah. tell us about it? Yeah, uh, we got a group called New Old Fools, um, which is uh, comprised of myself and Brian Fowler and Dan Campbell. Brian's a phenomenal uh, mandolin player from this area, which I'm sure y'all know already. And Dan Campbell is, is just about the best violin player that I've ever heard. Nice. And uh, I'm really lucky I get a chance to make music with him. And so we're writing together. We're we're doing a lot of fun stuff. So. Singing, Singing, harmonies. Yeah, lots of that. Uh, that sounds like a blast. Mm -hmm. um, I always like to get into the music, and I know you've got a couple of them for us, so what's the next scene that you want to do? This next song is called uh, Ground Down, and uh, you know, it's funny how songs happen. The, this song, I, I was, I ran into a buddy of mine who was having a really, just he was going through some tough times, and I asked him how he was doing, and he said, I'm hanging in there like a loose tooth. <laughs> and uh, and when he said that, I just I, I immediately thought I'm going to write a song about that. And so I I took that one line and started writing a song, and and this was the end result. So. All right. I had to see it with my own eyes. Now I wonder what's the use. Cause I have covered some miles in these walking shoes. Nobody knows where this road goes But folks, y'all got a lot to say I say stay on your toes and keep grooving away When you wake up When you take your seat Heaven all around you Ground down on your feet Yes, 
the beat. Heaven all around you, ground down all your feet. Guitar solo. Time to get up and time to get down When you wake up When you take your seat Heaven all around you Ground down all your feet When you lose it So started playing in high school. Yeah. What was your first band experience? Uh, I formed a band in high school uh, called Constant Rain. Uh, <laughs> spelled like rain, like a king's rain. Uh, so yeah, we were as bad as with the name. <laughs> and uh, we, we it had- It sounds like a metal band. And we weren't, <laughs> we weren't. We were like a horrible mashup of like widespread panic and Jimmy Buffett and uh, it was bad. We, uh, our, our biggest gig was we got to play for the Letter Carriers Association Annual Ball, which is a fancy way of saying the, uh, post, the, office. the post office. Yeah. <laughs> and, At uh, least your picture wasn't like in the lobby. <laughs> as, soon, as soon as they got done eating, we had we had we were playing for like two hours. As soon as everyone got done any eating, which was 15 minutes in, everybody left. <laughs> and so <laughs> we had this big hall that we played in for the next hour and a half to no one. <laughs> it was great. Oh man! And then I went into I went to Auburn. And I was there, I, I really got kind of inspired. Um, I helped kick off a little bluegrass band over there called Possum on the Half Shell. And then they kicked me out and got better. <laughs> and uh, and me and uh, some buddies uh, formed a band called Bowl of Soul. And that was a, a lot of fun. We were a kind of a funk, reggae, uh, rock and roll band. Ended up writing a lot of originals. And we went from being like a great party band that packed the place out to, you know, then we started writing originals and fewer covers, and then the band, kind of, the, the the crowd kind of diminished as as the. Uh, Isn't that funny that, how that works? Yeah, but we didn't care because we wrote some really good songs, and we're still great friends. We get together and play uh, still to this day. So. No, that's really yeah. cool. Um, after that, you know, after that, I went through a little bit of a hiatus. I, I did uh, church music for a while and, and led worship in a couple places, and then um, got over to Birmingham and went through a, a string of bands: uh, the Wagon Rut Ramblers. Uh, Meat and Three, um, what was that other name we had? Uh, uh, Cletus and the Slap Jaw Yokels. Uh, we were, we're actually just one band. The other band that is really awesome that I'm a part of is a we, we, is an album band. Uh, we're called Scattered and Pickled, and this is four guys who were best friends in high school: Jonathan Payne, Jeremy Snyder, Danny Chase, and myself. And we get together once a year and set up a mini studio. And prior to meeting up, we pick 15 songs that we're going to learn, and they might be thematic, or it might just be 15 good songs that we decide on. And we we get together at the river cabin and we record for three days straight. You and mentioned just, Jonathan Payne, and I haven't seen him yeah, in a while, but you know Jonathan, I know yeah. Jonathan. Yeah, Basketball that goes back for years. Yeah. He uh, great singer too. In fact, he uh, uh, has a great. When I ran into him, he was like, "Man, told me all about him and." getting inspired by one of my gigs that we were playing at Lady V's Blues and Jazz. I love you, Lady V. It was a great blues yeah, club. Yeah. And Jonathan and Danny came in there oh, okay, cool. and yeah. uh, and hung out and they just were like, that was the greatest time. Yeah. And I think that's when he started listening to blues. Yeah. But yeah, yeah I I'm like glad John. you set him down that path. I like he's John. really good at playing blues. Yeah, yeah. well, and, and he's playing in church too all the he time. Is, yeah, he's a great player with Christ I uh, I'm always amazed with how great of players you come across at church. Yeah. I mean, everybody's humble and Super good playing. So you are uh, went through a little stint. I've seen you were uh, doing Blackberry Possum. Right. Uh, yeah. And that's still current. Or, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and uh, and you got this new project going yeah. on. So that's really, really cool. Um, 
I know Mike left out of here with a big smile on his face, hoping that he could get together yeah, with you guys. So that'll be really cool. So what's this? Uh, what do you got next for us? Uh, this is a song uh, called "Right Now Ain't a Good Time," um, and it's a. Uh, it's actually, right now it actually is a good time, but uh, this is kind of a song if you imagine a, an episode of Cops in Western North Carolina. <laughs> that'll, that'll get you there. So you got a great way with words. I like your songs. Thank you. Um, Thank you. That's funny. That's a good one. Uh, so uh, when you're uh, when you're writing, do you have a process? I mean, I, I ask this to some people, but I notice some people they'll they'll have a guitar riff or a hook or some chords that inspire them, and some have a line that starts yeah. out. Do you have a, a motive to your madness or a theme, or does it just kind of come out any direction? Yeah, uh, this madness is right. Um, I, I have tried to write. Because I've come up with really awesome chord progressions, you know, I just I love them, but I can never figure out how to write and put a melody on there. I, I, I'm not good at that, um, and so I try to give those away. Uh, but I, I, most of my writing comes from the words first, and I try to work from getting 
a complete thought together and trying to, I don't even really form the melody yet. I just kind of work with the rhythm of the words. And um, and then eventually what I'll do is I'll the, feel like the, the rhythm of the words and, and, and the word order and how it flows will end up kind of leading me to a melody. And then I try to build my chords around that. Uh, and then I always, I mean, I, I end up, probably end up taking away 30 to 50 percent of every word that I've written um, and so because I'm not trying to write these big Bob Dylan songs and uh -huh. you know, brevity is better. Usually. Sometimes so, the songwriting process is that is to figure out how to say what you want to say. Yeah, in fewer words. Yeah. That's right. That's yeah. right. So. Well, that's, that's great. Yeah. Um, and uh, as someone that I know a lot of people look up to, I mentioned your name and everybody says, man, John's great. John's great. So do you have like if younger kids coming up inspiration anything of direction or anything that you might tell a kid that's you know starting to play guitar and trying to find his voice and uh any words of wisdom of how you were able to find yours or are you still yeah. searching or yeah, yeah i mean look the, the the best thing that i tell folks or is what somebody told me actually jimmy baker ever baker music told me was just play just keep playing uh don't don't worry about how it sounds just keep playing. And the other the other piece of advice that my dad actually gave me, which I rejected at the time, because you know I was a I was a budding deadhead, and, and he was a square, and he didn't know nothing. But <laughs> he told me he said, uh, you know, you need to learn songs. You need to learn songs. Right? Don't worry about those scales, whatever you're that jang and jang you're doing upstairs. But be able to sit down and actually play a song, even if it's not the best, or even if you know it doesn't sound like Jimmy Buffett when you do it. But learn how to play a song and. Through the years, that has been some of the best advice ever. It's not about learning licks or runs or how to use the capo or how to tune this way or that. It's really about you putting yourself out there and being willing to suck, but also be willing to bring joy to somebody and kind of put yourself in that position to let them receive a song. You know? I, I actually think that is great advice. I, I find a lot of people get so caught up in playing the instrument that they forget that they're playing, playing a song. That's right. That's and, right. Uh, and that's great advice. Um, you got one more for us? Yeah, this one's called Meant to Go. All right. So, hey, a good closer. Go. Yeah. <laughs> um, we'll be back, but let's take a listen. In this life, there's one thing I'm convinced it's got more to do with who I am than what I'm able to get. One more try to figure out the innuendo. And that was when I wouldn't see where my life was meant to go. But what have we missed? Leaning back on our heels, just waiting to be kissed. Get out of the in the sunlight that shines on you today Cause we weren't just built for sure You were meant to go No, you weren't just built for sure
just built the show Well, I can't tell you how much I appreciate you, your songwriting, and your singing and playing. Uh, John Boyd, check him out. He's uh, he's going to be tearing up the town in uh, the new band, New Old Fools. New Old Fools. Yeah. And, uh, and catch him in town, support him. Look up the Facebook page, make sure and give him a like. And uh, they're coming out with a record here soon, so when they do, or a CD, I should say, but when they do, uh, we'll go ahead and announce it on the show and make sure that you know where you can go to buy it. I'm sure you can come down to American Guitar Boutique and get it. We are starting to handle uh, local music discs for the people that we're supporting. Cool. So uh, we'll be sure to carry it in here. But I can't tell you how much I really, really appreciate you. Uh, give it up for John Boyd. We'll see you next week on No Cover Music Magazine.